You have uh, you exuding very good vibes. You're looking nice and uh, creating a wonderful atmosphere in the studios. Thank you so much, Zakallah. Uh, but since it's Juma Fahim, and I'm pretty sure we all go through high moments and low moments yes. in our life uh, because this is what life is all about. It is not a bed of roses, as they famously say in English. Uh, but Fahim, what do you do when you're facing very low moments in your life? How do you overcome that phase? Uh, and make sure that you do not go into that spiral of depression and anxiety which is so common nowadays well my coping mechanisms tend to be different at different sure, times sure. according to circumstances sure. but most of the times i usually go quiet i read something i go off in namaz or i sing so see i have diverse coping mechanisms alhamdulillah alhamdulillah because uh, Lots of people, there are some people who indulge in retail therapy. So whenever they're not feeling well, they go on shopping spree and they buy a lot of stuff. Alhamdulillah, I have, don't have that sort of habit. And I think nowadays inflation does not allow us to indulge True in that. such sort of luxurious uh, coping mechanism, as you pointed out. Uh, but I think the best therapy that you can do is uh, often go to Allah and talk with him because the silent communication that you're having with your Rabb, with your uh, Creator, with your Lord um, is the best communication because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that indeed there is a contentment of the heart lies in the zikr, in the remembrance and of the God. And the hope that you find when yes. you talk, when you yes. converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. is beyond imagination. It's ineffable. It's amazing, really. Well, uh, also, like we told you earlier, we told you yesterday, Lok Virsa Festival has started. We told you it's going to start on Friday and it, it has started. This is basically to show the world, to show tourists, to show the citizens of Pakistan what a diverse culture we live in, what sort of people do we have, what sort of beliefs do we have in traditions and literature and everything. It's assimilated under one roof in that festival and uh, this is uh, basically uh, it's a soft image that is being given to the rest of the world because obviously Pakistan is a country where loads of cultures are basically living under one identity and that is Pakistan. A rich, a diverse and uh, basically it's an inclusive culture that we live in. We've often talked about culture a lot and uh, basically that uh, is a celebration of that it's a celebration of uh, in uh, basically uh, embracing your culture accepting it your identity you're giving your out your identity you're proving your identity and showing it to the rest of the world and i think this is a very good initiative this is going to last till the 12th of this month and we would encourage all of you people who are watching us on television to please go out there, uh, let your kids know, let your kids know what your traditions are, what your beliefs, values and culture is. Right. I think it would help them a great deal. Right and uh, if, uh, whenever you go to this Mela because it is a yearly festival that takes place, there are lots of cultures which are represented there, Punjabi culture, Palochi culture, uh, Pashtun culture, Sindhi culture, the culture of Gilgit Baltistan and you find different artifacts, you find different uh, crafts there which yes. represents the different uh, ethnicities of the Pakistan and obviously different food because when last time I went there I had the uh, lassi with the saag and makai ki roti. How did I, I forget food really, while yes, I was talking? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I think your culinary appetite is not very uh, <laughs> satiable nowadays for him. Um, but of course, um, and then you will find the jalebis which we were seeing in the visual representation. So uh, this is a very uh, good festival. It's a very good outing, uh, especially for the people who are living in Islamabad because in Pakistan you don't find many outlets for the um, uh, outings except for the hoteling and restaurants. Uh, and and uh, Hajra, while we're talking about culture, we know that music is a very integral part True. of a culture of any civilization, of any country that we talk about. And when we talk about music of Pakistan, there is one name that is uh, known to each and everybody, both in Pakistan and internationally as well, not just Pakistanis, but people from other countries as well. It was Reshmaji. And today, her 10th death anniversary of that legend, basically, is, is being observed.
Nightingale of the Desert, as she was commonly known as, the grace and the poise in her personality was just amazing, I must say, and one of my favorites, to tell you honestly. Right, and then Fahim has a knack for uh, singing, and he really appreciates good music. Um, and now, obviously, you feel really pressured when you are sitting next to Fahim and humming something, because uh, <laughs> Fahim very uh, closely and keenly notices your tones and whatever the notes and whatever the technicalities of the music are involved. But um, now, let's kick start our conversation. Yes. <laughs> let's, <laughs> much, please. Much to yeah. the despite of Fahim. Um, <laughs> Because uh, nowadays uh, we are transitioning towards the winter. We are seeing that the weather is very confusing. In the morning, it's very cold. In the e uh, in the afternoon, you find that it's a bit hot, and in the evening, they're extremely pleasant. Uh, but obviously, that transition uh, single signals something, which is that uh, there are lots of skin issues which are. Uh, taking place and especially for the people who are having dry skin um, and that too for him I have noticing especially in the Islamabad that the air quality has uh, dropped a lot because you it can see um, yes. the very suspended particles in the air and you can feel them uh, in your throat so what sort of issues a skin can face in such sort of environment uh, we are very glad that we have been joined by someone who happens to be a skin specialist um, and she is Dr. Mevish Aftab. Assalamu alaikum Dr. Saiban thank you so much for coming to our show. Well, and thank so you so much for pleasure your having you, Dr. Mevish. Yeah. And Dr. Mevish is assistant professor at dermatology in PIMS. And Dr. Mevish, when we talk about skin, we talk about uh, a glowing, radiant, and a perfect skin, right? And when we talk about uh, the changing weather, especially like Hazra mentioned, yes. people with dry skin, transitioning. Yeah, they tend to have a lot of uh, cracked skin. They tend to, I mean, uh, have a lot of scales on their skin. So, what to do, especially? for people like them when the weather is transitioning especially because in, in the winters we know of course apply a moisturizer oil your skin etc what about the transitioning weather uh, first of all just uh, keep it in your mind that skin is just reflecting your inner health right yeah. like you uh, likewise you care your the whole body you have to care for your skin as well hmm. and as the weather is changing so you have to change all of your skincare regime as well. Right. It's not about applying a lot of moisturizer and applying a lot of oils to your skin. Mm -hmm. It's just a complete change in your lifestyle. Hmm. Right. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Mm. And uh, also to, to, to add on to that, like you said, changing of the lifestyle. We also know that uh, stress is something which is really prevalent in today's yes. society, yes. right? And uh, stress, uh, according to... Um, the little information that I have, it does cause some outbreaks, right? So could you highlight that too? Yes, stress is the most, most important aggravating factor for all of your skin concerns. It, uh, it not only just uh, makes your skin uh, aging fastly, but it also can lead to acne breakouts, flare-up of eczema, flare-up of any autoimmune condition or flare-up of any chronic inflammatory condition. You just always heard that stress can cause to heart attack, stress, uh, stress can mm -hmm. lead to stroke. True. But you never heard that stress can lead to the skin breakouts as well. Right, sir, Dr. Saiba, like I uh, alluded to the uh, fact before that we're witnessing that there's generally uh, degradation of the air quality nowadays in Islamabad and in Lahore, the smog is the fifth season uh, because it is so much prevalent. So mm. in this sort of environment, what sort of skincare routine do you recommend and what sort of precautionary measures do you recommend? Because skin is the largest organ uh, yes. right, of yes. our body. Yes, skin is the largest organ of the body and it uh, reflects your overall health, as I mentioned earlier. Mm. So just uh, before going out, mm -hmm. you just have to apply a good moisturizer with a good sunblock. Right. People usually forgot to apply sunblock while in winters. They think there, is, there are clouds or there are yeah, yeah, yeah. like rain and you don't need it. 
Right. Basically, you do need it as well. Right. It, uh, it will definitely prevent you from the aging and from all the toxins. And then when you go back home, just, uh, just remove all the makeup. Don't go to bed with the makeup on. Right, and, and you've mentioned about the fact that a good sunblock, right? So in your uh, dictionary, in your definition as a doctor, um, how would you categorize a good sunblock? Because nowadays we see that there's so much, so many companies uh, in the market and obviously the marketing campaigns are very strong and every uh, sunblock claims itself and, to and be... And also to add on to Hajra's question, something that I've always thought about and never knew the answer to, SPF 30, yes, SPF 60, 50, 70, 80. How are you supposed to choose? So before going into the details of sunblock, just understand what type of your skin is. Right. If you know your skin type, choosing a sunblock will be an easy right. process. Right. So for example, so, there are, dry. so some people have a dry skin, mm. then they have to choose for the moisturizing sunblock, All number right. one. If you have oily skin, you have to choose a gel based right. or sebum control. Right. There is mention over that, number two. Number three, if you, uh, if you think your skin is photosensitive, that it means that whenever you go out in the sun and your skin starts to irritate or it just uh, becomes itchy, mm -hmm. you need a higher SPF. SPF just stands for sun protection factor. Mm -hmm. Usually 25 to 30 is sufficient for normal skin. But if you are going to high altitudes, like you are going to northern areas, you may need up to 100. Because obviously the UV index is much higher. Much in, higher, yes. at right. higher altitude. Right, and in for Islamabad, which uh, SP effect? 30 is sufficient right. for right. the normal person if right. you are not photosensitive. Right. There are certain dermatological conditions that can aggravate in sunlight. Okay. We usually categorize them photosensitive disorders right. like autoimmune conditions like systemic leukocytomatosis. Mm -hmm. We prefer to use uh, SPF 100. Right, right. And uh, the very common misconception about sunblock is that when you apply it early in the morning and it gives you protection the whole day, it never. I you see. have to reapply the sunblock after every two to three hours right. while out in sun. Oh. If you want, you want to take the benefit of a sunblock. All right. Now, also, um, uh, there are a lot of creams. For example, Hajra might be knowing when BB you cream. apply makeup, yes. right? <laughs> yes, yes. And many of them, they do mention that they do contain sunblock. So, is it sufficient to use that, or you, do you have to use it separately? Yes, you can use if it is uh, mentioned that it covers a broad spectrum. It contains broad uh, spectrum right. sunblock factor. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the uh, the ingredients are titanium oxide, zinc oxide, evobenzone. Mm -hmm. These are usually mentioned over the creams. I see. Right, right. so Dr. Saiba, uh, we don't see this phenomena here, but in the West you will find this phenomena um, of people who are white skin, they want to have a tan skin and they go for the sunbathing a lot, right? So do you believe that it's dangerous? I mean, considering the fact that their skin is more prone to getting the cancer um, or, or the, is there any research that complements what I'm saying or is it just a myth that needs to be busted? Um, this is a very important question. Mm -hmm. Basically, tanning can cause skin cancers and they have to avoid it. They have to avoid it using sunblock because their skin is more prone to skin cancers mm -hmm. rather than our skin. So, uh, we will never recommend uh, sun tanning baths or like these things. Right. Or also, uh, there's something which is really common in this part of the world, uh, getting uh, glutathione injections or applying it on yes. your face, yes. uh, basically to make your skin more radiant, more fair. How beneficial or what are the pros and cons of application of that? Just understand your skin. What actually you, you want from your skin or how do you want to make your skin? Glutathione is an antioxidant. Right. It works wonders mm -hmm. as antioxidant. But if, we, if you want to change your skin tone mm -hmm. from 4, 3 to 1, you want to western look, mm -hmm. it will not. I see. It will not. Right, right. right. And, and Fahim, thank you so much for pointing it out that nowadays we see that there are lots of um, cosmetic surgeries that are coming up and uh, people are really invested into the concept of beauty and they want to have a beautified face and they have a particular perception about it, right? Uh, so, Dr. Saiba, when we come to the cosmetic surgeries and we see that there is a proliferation of the clinics across the country hmm. um, that supports uh, such sort of ventures out there, is it really a dangerous venture out there? What would you recommend, suggest? Because lots of time the uh, surgeries do not go as they are planned or as they are envisioned and um, they end up with having lots of plastics on their skins and we've seen actually celebrities that uh, how um, their natural face was changed because of these uh, ventures and, and that did not uh, envision in that sense. 
just understand two things surgery and uh, non surgical procedures which we are doing i'm being a dermatologist i'll talk about more the non surgical procedures right. that we can use the fillers and the botulinum toxin or prp etc you may be familiar of all these terms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these are basically good you have to choose a right place for your right concern if you go uh, for a skin treatment to a salon you will end up in a disaster right that's true also and it happens yeah uh, also dr saiba uh, we've seen that uh, another term which is being very commonly used as we were talking about right. it earlier as well that's hydrofacial we had heard about the term facial okay i'm getting a facial done i'm going to the salon getting a facial done what right. is hydrofacial exactly and again what are the pros and cons what is hydra what is meant by hydra water hydra mean water so the concept of hydrofacial is that you can get your skin cleaned with the help of water mm -hmm. in the form of different serums mm -hmm. all right the serums are made up of uh, exfoliants hydrating and uh, like lactic acid glycolic acid or hyaluronic acid so you don't need to go for a salon to, uh, for a massage that can lead to acne breakouts that can cause pigmentation we have seen a lot of patient from the salons that go for usual facials so overcome these issue everybody every skin uh, needs uh, any rejuvenation treatment or just removal of the dead skin hydrofacial is best for every skin type even if uh, in the coming season and winters to remove the dry dead layer of the skin I hydrofacial see. always helps it hydrates the skin it makes your skin healthy and glowy right. and i don't find it any side effect until unless you don't land up in a wrong place <laughs> i see <laughs> right so dr sagar we've also seen especially there are people who are suffering from the condition called melasma right and it aggravates with the uv rays and nowadays we see that um, this condition is getting aggravated and a lot of young people um, they are getting this melasma so what sort of uh, precautionary measures do you recommend for people or if they have it uh, what sort of treatment or cure do you recommend Uh, I mean, brown spots for people who do not, who are not aware for this. This is a very important topic to discuss about. It's a very, very, very common. I can, I must say that majority of our clients are suffering from melasma. Yes. Melasma is a Including stubborn. Including me, yes. <laughs> melasma is a yes. very stubborn skin condition. It just leaves the hyperpigmentation over the cheeks, nose, or the forehead. Yes. Number one, just what you, uh, how you can prevent it. Number one, mm. just don't get. Uh, Uh, inspire from social media influencers uh, mm -hmm. these whitening creams or these whitening procedures if you don't mm, play with your skin your skin will not react so what's Never, what's, ever. what's the Just treatment go. for it i'll guide you yeah. there are multiple reasons we have to dig out the reason when we treat that reason obviously melasma will go away number one the most important thing is the over the counter use of over the counter whitening cream that are easily available in the market that contains very strong and potent uh, steroids and mercury that leaves the brownish and mm, gray patch over the skin mm -hmm. so see. avoid all these whitening creams number 1 number 2 anemia low hemoglobin levels can lead to melasma right. number 3 hormonal imbalance right. so we basically when we have to treat melasma we have to dig out the cause right after in, um, um, investigating the cause the number one method which helps you always or which everyone can get benefit is the application of proper sunblock right i see and also uh, yes. that's something uh, uh, that i had an experience with my wife was advised a serum she herself is a doctor a uh, biodermatologist and she applied it and the dermatologist said that okay it will result in, in a breakout for a couple of days and the breakout did not go for 2 to 3 weeks and we had to stop it oh, there really? and then that okay this is just not working so is it possible that a proper serum or a proper uh, uh, prescribed medication by a dermatologist sometimes, may have an antagonistic effect some, sometimes it may happen sometimes right but not usually right 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 so dr saiba yeah. also walk us through a good skin care routine <coughs> especially nowadays in the winters uh, for the different skin care types because i do see people are really um, very relaxed about their skin and i think it's the biggest organ and we should be very careful about uh, and i think it's also the amanat of allah subhanahu wa taala because we need to protect our bodies along with our souls right yes. so please rec walk us through a good skin care routine um as you were already mentioned that it's a gift god gift we have to protect sure. it it's it is protecting our body exactly mm. it's just like a sentry mm -hmm. it protecting our inner organs that's true and uh, so we have to take care of it mm. 
and as I earlier uh, mentioned that it's a complete lifestyle it's not all about the skincare products Sure, you have ahead. to take good exercise, you have to right. take a good healthy diet. Right. Uh, for example, if you have acne issue and uh, you have been prescribed medicine from a dermatologist, uh, use this topical cream, use this medicine and you are not avoiding junk foods or you are not avoiding sugary items, you will not get the results. Right, right. So, so, so oh, whenever sugary you items, I did not know that. Yes. I see. Once uh, you realize that your skin health crumbs, uh, comes from all the these habits. Right then you will not end up in because any disaster. Often, often, often they say that if your digestive system, if your gut is healthy, your overall health is healthy. Healthy. So since you mentioned the, uh, the, the, the junk food and yes. sugary items, I thought of that. Your gut is healthy, your mind is healthy. And, and what does the good... If you are stressed, you didn't get the result. True, true. Yes, true. And, and what does a good and healthy uh, diet entails in your conception? Low fat, no junk food, no, no refined <laughs> carbs, no refined carbs in your diet, Right. Um, drink a lot of water, mm. fruit, mm. eat fruits right. rather than juices. Right, Seasonal right, one. all right, so there, there's, there is some fiber content as well, lovely. And nuts as well. Right, right, dry fruits and nuts and obviously they're very helpful, but thank you so much Dr. Saiba for coming here, for having this wonderful conversation regarding the skin issues that we are facing nowadays. And uh, because of our human activity, of course, we keep hearing that the UV rays are very strong and we need to be more protective about ourselves and protective about our skin. Because as I mentioned before, it is the amanat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should not take it for granted uh, and make sure that we are protected. Hadra, there were so many questions in my mind, but unfortunately we're pressed we're really for time. time yeah. So Dr. Saiba, thank you very much. It has been an absolute pleasure having you here so right. don't go anywhere people we will be right back stay tuned to btv world Welcome back to World This Morning with Hajar Sati and Fahim Bangush. And earlier before the break, we were having quite an educational uh, segment uh, because uh, we were talking about uh, skin health. We were talking about dermatological health and what to do if we have breakouts, and etc., etc. Quite a knowledgeable uh, segment, I must say. Now, and, in and, and Fahim, yeah. uh, we've also talked about since we both are associated with PTV World and P PTV. And PTV is an entire institution in itself and it has groomed all all of the private media, it has groomed hmm. all of the anchors and we have seen not just in the field of journalism but in the field of showbiz, in the field of entertainment and there are so many big names that stands out and PTV continues Mother to carry institution out. as they exactly, call it, yes. Exactly, to carry out that legacy and uh, PTV, um, people still remember the impact of those dramas, of those music, of those plays that were uh, broadcasted on PTV and it was named or termed as the golden age of the PTV and one such particular personality that is also associated uh, with PTV um, is uh, happens to be a Begum Nayyara Noor so birth anniversary of legendary Pakistani singer Nayyara Noor is being observed today she was born on 3rd November 1950 in um, Gowati Assam in northeastern India in 1971 Nayyara Noor made her public singing debut in Pakistani television serials and then Begum fil films like uh, Gharana and Pansin. Uh, she has since sung Ghazal and has been penned down by famous poet like Ghalib and Faiz Ahmed Faiz and has performed with the legends like uh, Mehdi Hassan and Ahmad Roshidi. And she has also won three gold medals in all Pakistani music conference and a Nigar award for the best player female singer film. And 
lovely and sweet and melodious voice, as I call it, and I can never forget the kalam that she sang of Faiz Ahmed Faiz, Raatiyo Dil Me Tere Koi Hui Yaad Aai. That's, that's very true, and these were the people, Fahim, that groomed a lot of people, and they yes. groomed the character of uh, uh, the generation that came after them, and still we can see. Uh, if you watch the old dramas of PTV, you will find that um, the the dialogues uh, had such a brevity in them and the pronunciation, and we were still reminiscing about uh, what sort of uh, I mean the, the dialogues and the plays and the, the script writing was present there. That was such a powerful moving. And, and Hajra, since we're talking about the golden age, we see how the people were in the golden age, how sincere True. they were in True. the golden age. True. We see a lack of that today. There is uh, an extreme of sincerity in today's world and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in our second segment that is character building in today's era and for that uh, I must introduce our guest we have Mr. Asif Nazir Saab he's a motivational speaker Asif Saab welcome to PTV World and good morning thank you very much thank you very much for inviting me lovely to have you sir now sir since we're talking about character building now character involves your beliefs character involves your overall personality we've seen uh, that slowly and gradually over generations we've seen there has been a decline in the overall character as a nation i'm talking about i'm not going outside of pakistan inside of pakistan we see a decline in that what do you think are the reasons basically and has do you think the quality of parenting reduced or declined over time uh Fahim, let me start with an example that uh, uh, whenever you construct a building a multi-layer tower hmm. uh, then the basic ingredients are you need very high quality bricks you need uh, cement you need uh, a sand you need number of other ingredients to make that building foundation very solid hmm. and then what happens is after that solid building then you need paints you need lighting you need wood and all these to beautify that building and if we put the same example if we talk about the character so the basic ingredients are in fact when a person is disciplined visionary he, he, he or she has got some purpose in his or her life and at the same time uh, responsibility and if somebody has all these basic things and let me tell you that character is basically it's an inside out process mm -hmm. right. first you develop your foundation first you make your building very solid and then what happens is that once your building is very solid then you start out reaching people by respecting them by sharing your knowledge your expertise <coughs> your resources you start you know you're being more responsible and that's how once your character is very solid and you are sharing with the other people as well now you are you have started contributing in society contributing in the family on the different level in your department so uh, this is what we call character and then the people start talk start talking about that yet he or she is credible and when you get this stamp of being credible or trustworthy that's how you start emerging as a leader right. you start emerging as a leader and usually we talk about two things right in, in, in usually we call the two c's the one is your character and the second one is your competence i'm coming to your question as well but and before that is, i'm i'm, I'm sorry, you know second one is 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 your competence. competence now the difference is what you being in this profession your competence you need different skills mm -hmm. i need different set of skills in the same profession if somebody is in united states might need different set of skills in the 50 years back required different skills 50 years after this you need different skills so your competence can change as per the time the region the gender different organizations but your your character remains the same right so you talk about honesty 50 years back honesty is the same and till the end of the time and in uh, it will remain the same you know in all the religions in all the genders the race and the time and everything so your character matters a lot and your competence can change so if you have to pick one thing character or competence you have to go for the character and now let's come to the point you're talking about that with the passage time yes what happens is that uh, I, I do agree with the fact that now if we just look at our society and if we have very close analysis you will see very few people those who have got a very solid character and and the basic reason is that we have left those element of parenting now the biggest respo res uh, responsibility lies on the parents mm -hmm. because early on when when your beliefs are developing as a kid so what happens is the kids they do not do what you say 
They do they what do you what do. You do in fact. Yeah. So that's how they are developing their beliefs. That's how they are developing their their character. And w once we are away from all those teachings, so our parents are not th the role models which they used to be. Our teachers are no more the role models. Hmm. So that's why, as a society, we are we are after a, we are in a rat race. And that's how those standards we had. And as per Islam, you see that uh, now in the Western world, what happens is they have they are developing their own standards. They learn from their experiences. But we have a very solid guideline, in fact. What Allah says, that you have a role model in shape, our Prophet, peace be upon him. His each and every act is mentioned. How to eat, how to sit, how to sleep. Means how to do the business, how to become a good husband. How to become, you know, a businessman. So we have got a standard set as right. I'm character. sorry I have to interject yeah. because we're really short on time, and I think Fahim and I are seething with lots of yeah. questions yeah. because it's, it's a very interesting, interesting topic. <laughs> yeah. uh, because, but one thing that I would like to mention here is that um, the biggest institution that is responsible for our nurturing is the family, obviously, yeah. and the second one is the schooling because yeah. then we go to school and then we see uh, that how our teachers are interacting with us, how our peers are interacting with us, and that has uh, an impact on the transformation of our identity. But nowadays, if you see and look at the schooling system, you will see that they are churning out students uh, not just the students they're churning out the clients and they just want to uh, satisfy their students they're not focusing a lot on the nurturing part and because of this cross commercialization of the education I believe has degraded the quality or has and, and to add on to that uh, Hajra, if yes. some teacher wants to correct a child yes. the parents will suddenly come over there we're paying you you're not supposed to say anything to the child yeah and that yeah. is uh, shattering yeah. their confidence with very lame excuses like that right so how can we reverse this tide where uh, the students are treated like a clients and their nurturing is getting affected badly because the concept that teachers are your second parents that's yeah, vanishing teachers, but, but now but now these days actually this, the schools are the money money making machines in fact mm. so you are very right so the both the institutions the parents and the teachers and even the society they have got a very important role we, we usually forget about because what happens is if a person with a very good character comes in a society he or she is contributing like anything to the society a single individual with a very solid character can have a wow impact on the society and similarly a person with a negative character can have you know you know a, a, you know a disaster on the society so similarly so now the point is what everybody has to take this responsibility you cannot blame anyone so basically we have to understand the kind of mess we have right now in the society and we have this example we have the evident that what is going on means if you ask one thing that uh, uh, the biggest disaster we have in our society is the moral collapse we have True. and that moral is because collapse. of the fact that we are nowhere as far as the character standards are concerned mm -hmm. yes. so everybody has to take this responsibility we as a parent we have to understand that this is the role model our role model is our prophet peace be upon him <laughs> so yes. we have to take the examples from that yes we need to study you know the steve jobs and you know martin luther king also all they're the great people and the leaders but we have a very solid example we have the benchmark we have to take example and if we are not going to do that we individuals and as a society everybody has to pay the price which we are paying right now because so like, it is my yeah. responsibility it is your responsibility it is the responsibility of the parents and yes so what we can do that right. we need to talk more on this you uh, you know on the media when you talk more on you know the character building there are so many books written and everything but we need to talk more so Means like you, yeah, like you were talking about morals right yeah that we're going towards a decline as far as morals are concerned now if we look at the society today if we look at the peer pressure that the children have these days right the stress that they have these days and this is the era of Netflix and chill right yes. you have the gadgets in your hands True. you can watch anything there uh, that creates a conflict in the mind of a young person that we're following this religion whereas we see the Western uh, society as a very open society as a pluralistic society where everything is accepted so that will create a revolting sort of an emotion inside them and would make them sort of somewhat rebellious so what to do about that because teenagers these days are much much difficult to handle than the teenagers of perhaps one or two yeah. generations back because of the complexities of this new digital age exactly right? no, Go but, ahead. but but yes I agree with the fact but but actually you need to you can use this technology in a positive way as well mm -hmm. so for example being a father if I go back home and if I start using uh, my uh, mobile phone and if I spend like four or five hours on social media and I, if I keep on you know talking my kids that don't you don't use this social media 
so i myself i spending 4 to 5 hours a day and 4 to 5 hours a day means that i am right. spending like uh, uh, out of 60 years I of think age that's very uh, reasonable time because yeah. i spend more than 4 to 5 hours yes, on and everybody yeah. does and even more than that and you know what it exactly means 6 7 hours 5 6 7 hours means that you are spending like uh, 10 15% of the total lifetime that's true 50-60% of life yeah, means you are you spending 10 way, years on social media. So if as a parent, as a mother, as a father, if we are setting example positively, we go back, we sit with the, with the children, we engage them in the different activities, we need to engage them in the physical activities. Yes, we can't say that don't use this, but we can actually minimize these things and the only way is by setting examples. And but then, sir, another question that arises, being a parent myself, right, that uh, we live in such a time that when both the partners are working partners, their tolerance level is already low. They've been dealing with people throughout the day, and by the time they reach home, they're in such a frustrated state of mind that they don't have the patience to perhaps continue uh, the continuous engagement with children and uh, uh, go going out for activities with them, except for the weekends, of course. That is the comfortable True. time. So what about the ev on, on an everyday basis? How is it possible to do it for a normal person? A frame uh, uh, means when we talk about the time management, actually it's a myth to be very honest that we do not have the time. Usually everybody uh, gets back right around five o'clock, six o'clock. So uh, it's ab all about the awareness. We have to create this awareness for True. ourselves and we need to understand the fact that, you know, the loss is massive. Hmm. Means where we are, you know, uh, letting this generation go means they are getting out of control. Hmm. We need to realize this fact. Otherwise, there is no excuse. But this is not an excuse that if, if I'm working and if I'm working day in and day out. So uh, I'm compromised. I'm making a lot of money, but I'm compromise, compromising on my values. So if you have to pick one, so you, you should go for your values means I'm not saying that you leave everything and you know start teaching that's it doesn't work like that obviously but we obviously. have to create a balance we have to take care of those values actually now we, we do not even think about these things means for example if somebody's making money nobody talks about the source of income everybody's enjoying the money through that through that so we need to talk about otherwise we have to pay the price means being a, if I'm as a father, if I'm not taking care of my kids and I, I'm not, you know, analyzing where they're going, how they're managing their time, what they're doing, how they're using their social media and everything, their friends. So I have to pay the price. And then the price and the loss would be much bigger than my one or two hours per day. That's actually a very pertinent point. So we, the we have to, loss. everybody has to, yeah. every, and, and our society is the classic example of the moral disaster we have. We do not have time for the kids. We, we do not care about their, uh, their you know, grooming and their character building and we are paying the price. Right and, and that is why there's a very famous maxim of, uh, in China that it takes a village to raise a child, right? Um, that basically Lovely. points out that how uh, there's so many people involved and because we are social animals, we humans, so um, and, and we need the support of each and every individual True. and uh, with this digital age where we are so much engrossed and engulfed in digital activities and making digital identities uh, and engulfing ourselves in the digital uh, life that we fail to, uh, f uh, I mean, find the time for our non-digital life and that, that is why uh, it's very important that we focus on it. But now let's come back uh, to the character building aspect of it, mm. right? Um, so. And and you talked about <coughs> Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he's the best role model and they're already principles contemplated in Islam and so much so at a such a uh, deeper and, and, and uh, I would say mega or meso level that uh, even there are etiquettes for how you need to go to someone's house, you need to knock and you do not need, have to stand just in front of the door, uh, just stand in the right side of the door or the left side of the door so whenever the door is open the privacy is not breached, right? Um, so, so many etiquettes are being taught in Islam uh, but obviously we have lost contact with all of these etiquettes and we there's a need to revert back to the prophetic era how do you think it is possible because nowadays I, we, there's this conversation is going about you know how we, we should be more modern about it and when we talk about the concept of modernity we lose that Islamic identity in that very confusing blend right so how can we reconcile these both identities and make sure that we keep back or retain our Islamic identity or the prophetic identity when it comes to a character building uh, Hajra, let me tell you that uh, those people talk about that I uh, uh, mean that Islam I believe that 
Islam is the most modern religion and the practice we have. Talk about namaz. Five times a day, a court totally charged millions of dollars of a single session internationally. And you know, thousands of people attending his workshop on what? Meditation. Nothing is better than namaz if you are performing your namaz, you know, as it is advised. Means you see that Allah is actually seeing you. So no meditation is better than that. Mm. Namaz is pure discipline. True. Yes. So uh, means uh, actually uh, we have this misconception and we couldn't understand Islam. We have a very, you know, uh, you say that uh, superficial knowledge. Uh, superficial knowledge of Islam. If you go into the details, each and every activity, Islam. Uh, let me tell you, Islam is not about, the, the, you know, uh, the the Jannah and the Dozakh only. It's about this world as well. Means the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. You just look at uh, Hazrat Umar Anhu. They had all those values and they conquered the world. In fact, so. Uh, means saying this that Islam is you know something of the old age religion and the world is the world has nothing to talk except Islam the, now, the, uh, the Western media of, yeah. you just look at their values now if you just you must have traveled to the Europe you go to the Europe means they are getting up early in the morning at namaz time though they do not offer Fajr prayer and they have all their activities closed around Maghrib that's true that's true. That's yes. True, that's true. So if they do something, that is the standard. And if if Islam says like 14, 1500 years back, so so we have to understand. They have means Allah Ta'ala and Azur Pak means everything they have blessed us with. All these gifts of namaz and zakat and all these things. So they are till the end of the time. Uh, you know, I think uh, people have misconstrued the overall concept of modernity yeah. as far as Islam is concerned. They mm. think of modernity as uh, moral terms, decline yes. or a Western concept of mm. uh, overall dressing, etc. But modernity is here. That's what we fail mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Well, th thank you very much, uh, Asim Nazir Saab, for coming here, giving us no your time you. and sharing your valuable information with us. It was an absolute pleasure thank meeting you, you and sharing information thank with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. And with that, we will wrap up our segment and Juma Mubarak to you and everyone out there and please make sure that you remember us in your prayers Absolutely. so until next time it's a goodbye Allah Hafiz and good morning, good morning.